Welcome to our midweek meditation for March 20th and next to the last Wednesday in Lent for this season. We begin with the first few verses of Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. Our gospel lesson today begins with one of the best-known gospel passages. It's even waved on on banners at sports events and shouted out at different times. From the Gospel of John, the third chapter, beginning with the 16th verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people loved the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Lord, we ask your blessing on the reading and the hearing of your holy word. Amen. We've heard this said and seen it written in so many different places. <clears throat> For God so loved the world. I've told you about a, a friend's dream, someone who really needed God's love, who dreamt that the, uh, that the Lord told the angel that he loved her so much, that were she the only person in the world, he would have had to give Jesus and all that went with that gift so that she would not perish, but have eternal life. The world needs to hear this message that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But remember that that word saved in in Greek, the original language that John wrote this in, doesn't just mean saved, it means healed. So that we might not just be saved, but also healed, brought to the fullness of of wellness, of shalom, peace as it should be, especially our spiritual and mental health, as it should be that we might be saved through the love that is in Jesus Christ. We certainly see the judgment. Those who want to do evil shun the light. We had a situation down in Pennsylvania where a bunch of young folks would gather on some steps of the church there on Main Street. And uh, we would find in the morning the stubs of certain types of cigars, stuff of a certain type of hallucinogenic weed, so to speak. We might find nips. We might find all kinds of evidence of things that they, these teenagers were gathering in this dark corner where the light wasn't on to do things that, uh, well, they weren't good for them. And they certainly, some of the things weren't within God's sight of what's right either. And I had to convince a couple of the elders of the church not to turn the lights out on those porches at night. And uh, lo and behold, things cleaned up real nicely. Now, for the first week or two, I got a phone call from one particular elder who called the parsonage every night and said, Pastor Dave, the lights are still on. I'm going to go turn them off. Oh, please, uh, Harold, don't, don't turn the lights off. The lights are there for a reason, because when the lights were on, 
those acts didn't occur. So Jesus, of course, is the light of the world. We know him to be that light. And in his light, we are encouraged to do good. And people can see the good that God has us do and would, would lead us to do. And that this loving work is done in God's name. So let's share that light. Let's share the works that are done in the light. That the world might know that God loves them. That Christ is there as a sign of love. Those people that hear the Bible and think they hear it and say, oh, it's, it's full of thou shalt nots. It's full of all the things that we can't do. Well, no. It's there to save us, not condemn us. It's there to teach us how to be loved, how to love in turn, to be saved in the sense of reconciled to God, but also to be healed in the sense of mental spiritual, loving wellness of shalom, one with another. Continue to share the message. Seek to live in the light. Seek to shun the darkness that hides the things we wouldn't want God to see. Because as I found in one of the other Psalms, in fact, I think it's later in the, the Psalm I just read, um, there's nowhere to hide from God. There are no depths of hell, no corners of the world, no dark of the night where we can hide from God. But he calls us winningly to come seek the light with him, the light in him, the light in Christ. Willingly that God doesn't have to seek too hard to bring us out of the dark places. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn-crowned brow, lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance over you and give you peace. Amen and amen.